I'm Carl Azus. Welcome to CNN Student News. This week, the victims of the Boston terror bombings are being honored in different ways. That's how we start off today's show. Yesterday, the city of Boston paused for a moment of silence at 2.50 p.m., the same time when, one week earlier, explosions went off near the finish line of the Boston Marathon. More than 180 people were injured by the explosions. Around 50 of them are still in the hospital. Three people were killed in the attack. Memorial services for two of them, Crystal Campbell and Ling Zhu Liu, were held on Monday. The surviving suspect, Jakar Sarnayev, has been in the hospital since he was arrested last Friday. He can't talk because of his injuries, but he's communicating with investigators by nodding his head. Yesterday, he was charged with using a weapon of mass destruction and with malicious destruction of property by means of an explosive device. If he's convicted, those charges could result in the death penalty. When he was arrested, the suspect was not read his Miranda rights. There's been some debate about that. We'll get into it in just a minute. But first, Gene Casares is going to explain a little more about Miranda rights. The Miranda warning is constitutionally based and it's very important for every single citizen in this country. Because let's say you are being interrogated by law enforcement, you don't feel free to leave, and you say things that incriminate yourself, they could be used later on in a court of law against you. So it is very important to have knowledge of that and to be given notice of that. Uh, the Miranda warnings was born from a case in Arizona, Miranda versus Arizona. It was a man being prosecuted for domestic violence. And all of his statements were let in when he was not given a warning. He didn't know that they could be. So here's what happens. Let's say someone is being interrogated. The Miranda warning is you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you. You have a right to have an attorney present. Officers don't have to read a suspect his or her Miranda rights. If they don't, it usually means that anything the suspect tells police cannot be used as evidence. But for this case, the federal government is using something called the public safety exception. It says investigators can question a suspect before reading the Miranda rights if the investigators believe there's a threat to public safety. And those statements can be used at trial. During the manhunt for the surviving bombing suspect last Friday, a lot of Boston and the surrounding suburbs were on lockdown. Businesses didn't open. People didn't go to work. A city that was already reeling from the human cost of the violence suddenly had to deal with an economic cost as well. Christine Romans examines that impact. Economists say the losses from shutting Boston down for a day are big but short term and that many businesses and the broader Boston economy will be able to absorb and make up for those losses. James Diffley from IHS Global Research says it could be as much as a third or a quarter of Boston's daily business that was shut down on Friday. Boston is a big economy. That's a lot of money. The Boston metropolitan area produces $325 billion worth of goods and services every year. That's a little less than a billion dollars a day. So think of that, a third to a quarter of that just gone from Friday. And, and of course, Boston is the ninth largest GDP in the country. So it is a big American city shut down. Everything stopped Friday. Businesses closed. Public transit, known in Boston as the T, shut down. 16 of the area's 35 colleges had canceled classes, including Harvard, MIT, Boston University, Northeastern. Most taxis were off the roads and shopping centers were shut. But while many people worked from home or had the day off, some workers actually couldn't be busier. Thousands thousands of law enforcement officials and workers, hospital workers, hotel employees working overtime. Some Dunkin' Donuts locations stayed open as well, reportedly at the request of first responders. There was a lot of business there. Uh, there are insurance claims businesses can file for terrorism-related losses if it's covered. An analyst at Risk Management Solutions says that uh, property damage claims are likely to be less than a million dollars. It will be the business interruption uh, that will be what is going to cost some companies uh, money. And it's it's going to be difficult for small businesses to get back that revenue meet their payroll. Authorities in Canada say they've broken up a terror plot in their country. They also said there is not a connection between this and the attack in Boston. In Canada, officers arrested two men who are accused of planning an attack against a passenger train. Officials say the suspects were getting support from an al-Qaeda terrorist group in Iran. Canadian authorities say these suspects, who were under surveillance for more than a year, were capable of carrying out the attack but they said the public was never in serious danger. Later this week, there's a public memorial scheduled for the victims of last week's deadly explosion at a fertilizer plant in the Texas town of West. 
President Obama is planning to attend a memorial. In West, many residents are focused on recovery and rebuilding. That includes the town's schools. Many of them were damaged or destroyed by the blast. So when people realized students needed somewhere to go, they got to work. Volunteers and district groundskeepers turned an old empty school building into the new West High School. They painted walls, made signs, brought in food and supplies, and they did it all in just a few days so that it would be ready for students to return to class yesterday. We don't want them to think they're visiting. This is theirs, and it gives them an opportunity to have some place that they can still do their work and get an education. Parts of the Midwestern U.S. have been struggling through some severe weather. Record-setting rainfall in the past week or so has led to flooding in some areas. This is the parking lot of a school in Indiana. Parents left their cars there to help chaperone a field trip. Probably didn't expect them to end up underwater. Also, you see those golden arches? This isn't just a McDonald's, it's the McDonald's, the first one ever built. It's been turned into a museum, and last week it flooded. And the car on the right, now you see it, now you don't. This sinkhole on the south side of Chicago swallowed up three vehicles last week. All the water softened up the ground, which caused it to give way. When you hear about cities and people recovering from some kind of disaster, you might wonder what you can do. CNN's Impact Your World program has answers. Check out the link in the resources box of our homepage. Find out how you can make a difference for people recovering from the flooding in the Midwest, for folks in West Texas, or those in Boston. Teachers, we always appreciate your comments in the resources box at cnnstudentnews.com, but now it's all about you. Teacher Appreciation Week is less than two weeks away. This year, we're looking for students to shout out their favorite teachers and assign them superlatives, you know, like most likely to, and then fill in the blank. All the details are on our iReport page. You can start sending them in now. The deadline is May 3rd. How do you send us an iReport? Check it out. Here's how you can get on CNN Student News. Couple of quick things. One, you have to be at least 13 years old. And two, we don't want to hear any music in the background. We just want to hear you. So, you shoot your video. That's how you start. We did this on a cell phone. Simple as that. Then, go to iReport.com slash CNN Student News. You fill out your info, you upload your video, and if it's chosen, you will hear from us in an email about the last step. Good luck. Today's shout out goes out to Mrs. Skaggs AP English class at Valley View High School in Caldwell, Idaho. About how much of Earth is covered by water? You know what to do. Is it 33%, 50%, 70% or 95%? You've got three seconds. Go. Around 70% of the planet is covered by water, but only a small amount of that is fresh water. That's your answer, and that's your shout out. If you didn't get that one, you've got more chances now with our Earth Day quiz. We said only small amount of the Earth's water is fresh. What percentage do you think it is? 1%, 2.5%, 7.3%, or 15%? It ain't much. 2.5% of Earth's water is fresh, and most of that is locked up in polar ice. Next, how many gallons of water does the average American family use in a day? Is it 25 gallons? 50 gallons, 100 gallons, or 300 gallons. This one surprised all of us. The U.S. government says the average family uses 300 gallons of water every day. These questions came from a quiz that CNN.com put up on Earth Day yesterday. You can find the link to the rest of those questions in the resources box on our homepage. Pool, bowling, basketball, a lot of sports have great shots and great trick shots. Four, here comes Bubba. An upside down clubber. It may look like a golf ball, but it skips like a stone. This isn't the Masters, but consider the mastery it takes to dribble a golf ball, set it up, and spike it. Take a victory lap, Mr. Watson. Even when he's not making green on the green, he's making golfers green with envy, shot after tricky trick shot. Tough to get teed off at a sweet trick shot. Your eyes are Watson the whole time. No matter how you slice it, it's just so easy to get hooked. We're out of puns for now. We'll have to golf figure out some more. Maybe tomorrow we'll take another swing.